Today's session is about the intraoral radiographic technique. So this is the control panel that you can see where you can adjust the time period. And then we have the x-ray machine that you see here with the extension arm and the x-ray tube head. Once we switch on the machine, well, first and foremost what you have to do is to adjust the time period that is required for the image to be taken. And then we try to adjust the angulation that you can see here. So first and foremost, we are taking an intraoral radiographic te technique for the maxillary central incisors, wherein you are taking a vertical angulation for 40 degrees. And then you are asking the patient to open their mouth wide open so that you can place the film in such a way that the long axis of the packet is found to be, X-ray packet is found to be parallel to that of the long axis of the central incisors. And, and we are giving it vertical angulation for plus 45 degrees and you are asking the patient to place their finger behind and such a way that the occlusal plane is found to be parallel to that of the uh, floor. And then you can notice that you have to place the such a way that the um, X-ray tube head, the central ray is found to be pointed, point of entry is supposed to be through the tip of the nose and we are adjusting it accordingly so that the projection of the central ray is around 40 degree angulation and this horizontal angulation is found to be a zero degrees and we are placing the point of entry of the x-ray to the tip of the nose so this is how we take the x-ray for or the IOPA for the central incisors next we move on to the canine projection, maxillary canine projection. So we are giving a vertical angulation of plus 45 degrees and we are placing the film such a way that the center of the film is where your canine must be image, must be seen. So we are trying to cent uh, center the position of the canine in such a way that the uh, long axis of the film packet is found to be parallel to that of the long axis of the canine and then we give the end the point of entry for it is found to be through the canine eminence so such that it's supposed to intersect the distal and the inferior borders of the ala of the nose so this is how we take the maxillary, cent uh, maxillary canine projection So mainly we must know the vertical angulation that you are supposed to be given for each of the radiographs. Next we are placing a snapper ray holder and we are positioning and we are locking the snapper ray holder such that we are trying to take the projection for the maxillary premolars. So the premolar that is supposed to be taken should be placed in such a way that the image is supposed to be in the center of the x-ray film and then we place the receptor in such a way that the plane of the receptor is nearly vertical to the corresponding to the long axis of the premolar tooth and then we are placing the x-ray tube head such a way that the point of entry is passing through the center of the second premolar root that is it is supposed to be below the pupil and the vertical angulation that you give is around plus 30 so we are given the vertical angulation of plus 30 and we see that the central ray is found to be perpendicular to that receptor and is passing through the entry is found to be below the pupil of the eye. Now next we are trying to position for the maxillary molars such a way that the receptor is found to be placed in a rotated in a position with a firm and a definite motion and in that the place the film as further as possible posterior to cover the first second and the third molar areas next we are giving an angulation for vertical angulation of plus 20 and the central ray is direct in such a way that it is supposed to pass through the right angles to the buccal surface of the molar teeth so that is almost to the outer canthus of the eye we are placing the point of entry so you can see here that I'm placing the point of entry through the outer canthus of the eye I have 
place the point of entry for the x-ray tube head the central ray will be directed so here so now we are done with the maxillary molar projection next we move on to the projection for the mandibular central incisors you have to check the occlusal dot such a way that the occlusal dot should coincide with the incisal edge and this is how we place the receptor or the image receptor for the mandibular central incisor projection such a way that you ask the patient to lift their head up so that the floor of the mouth is found to be parallel to that of the floor and uh, we ask the patient to place the finger behind the image receptor and always make sure the inferior surface of the receptor is found to be touched against the floor of the mouth now we are trying to position the x-ray tube head and we are giving a vertical angulation of minus 15 in such a way that the central ray or the x-ray uh, central ray of the x-ray is found to be directed towards the tip of the chin so this is how we take the mandibular central incisor projection so this is how the ideal position that you are placing the x-ray tube head for the mandibular central incisors so once we are done with this we move on to the mandibular canines projection so again the center of the uh, image receptor must be your canine to be placed and then we are going to place the image receptor such that the in uh, occlusal dot is coinciding to the cuspal edge of the canine and the inferior surface of the image receptor must touch the floor of the mouth or else we won't get the apical portion of the canine so always remember you have to touch the floor of the mouth sometimes the patient might even fidget around with the image receptor such that they will place it quite uh, superiorly and we will get the image cut off of the apical cut off will be observed so you always have to make it sure that the inferior surface touches the uh, floor of the mouth and here we are trying to position the vertical angulation which we are giving a minus 20 degrees for the canine projection and we are going to direct the x-ray tube head in such a way that the central ray is directed through the mesial contact of the canine and the point of entry is found to be nearly perpendicular to that of the ala of the nose over the position of the canine that is 3 centimeters above the inferior border of the mandible so this is how we direct the central ray for the projection of mandibular canine next we move on to the projection for the mandibular premolars so now you can see that the occlusal dot must coincide where the snapper ray holder must be placed and then as i've already mentioned the occlusal surfaces must coincide with the occlusal dot and then we are asking the patient to bite around the bite tag of the snapper ray holder now we are positioning the vertical angulation for the mandibular premolars which is found to be minus 10 degrees giving a minus 10 degrees of vertical angulation for the mandibular premolars and the central ray is directed in such a way that the point of entry is below the pupil of the eye and that is 3 centimeters above the inferior border of the mandible so this is how we direct the x-ray or the point of entry for mandibular premolar projection so you can see here where i've directed the point of entry that is coinciding below Next. the pupil of the eye we move on to the mandibular molar projection now we place the image receptor quite posteriorly such that we try to get the anterior edge of the um, second premolar that is the middle part of the second premolar till the posterior aspect or the distal aspect of your third molars and we give a vertical angulation of minus 5 degrees and the point of entry for the mandibular molars is such that it is found to be below coinciding below the outer canthus of the eye and 3 centimeters above the inferior border of the mandibular this is how we do the projection for mandibular molar where the point of entry is directed coinciding below the outer canthus of the eye and 3 centimeters above the inferior border of the mandible 
so this is how we do next i'm going to show how we have adjusting for the control panel you can see that there's you can adjust in such a way that you can change the kvp you can change the milliampereage and then the seconds so it's given in 0 0.630 seconds as of now okay so this is how you adjust the kvp the milliampereage and the seconds now have reduced it you can reduce it to 400 you can reduce it to 500 seconds After ex adjusting the exposure parameters, then we press the exposure button such that when the noise stops, then you relieve your finger from the exposure button. And thus, you have taken the image, the latent image has been captured over to the X ray film receptor. Next, we are going for the processing. We do it in the darkroom setup. So, this I am just showing a demo in the light setup itself already which the film has been uh, exposed and which has already been processed i'm just showing the demo this has to be done in the darkroom setup with no light and here i'm placing the clipper over to the occlusal dot surface and then i'm removing it from the film cover and then i'm going for the processing so the first processing solution is the developer so you develop the image such a way that you would see the varying densities in the gbx2 red filtered light wherein you can see that the pulp is found to be more darker or a radiolucent structure and then you have the dentin and the enamel next you move on to the water solution that is placed for 30 seconds and then to the fixer once you're placing in the fixer solution then you can switch on the light and then you can see the image that has been taken and then you can pass the uh, x-ray film over to the running water so that you remove all the solutions that has been precipitated within the film and then you can keep it for drying some you have a dry machine also here in our setup we try to use the air dryer itself and then after you're done with the processing so this is the image that you get in your broad daylight if you observe the image that has been seen in the x-ray film so this is the developing solution the water and the fixer solution and that's the running water thank you for your patient listening good day